personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Car lease versus purchase decision. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, the Practice Problems tab in the 6180 Car Lease versus Purchase Decision tab. Also, take a look at the Immersive Reader tool. Our presentation should also be in the text area with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages and either listened to or read in them. We have the information related to the purchase up top and then down below we have information related to a lease so we can compare and contrast the process that we might go through when we're making this type of decision. Obviously the purchase of a car is a decision that might implement or impact multiple periods into the future. Therefore, we might want to put a more formal thought process or structure into our decision making as opposed to the more short term decisions which we might make more on the basis of habit and routine. So the first thing we might want to look at is to just take a look at the cash flows that would be involved under the two methods over the periods that are going to be involved. And then we might want to add into that the time value of money types of calculations that we'll do after this point. So first we got the cash flow related to the purchase. Let's imagine that we've got the down payment and we're going to finance part of it. Down payment of the 7,800. And then we have the monthly loan payment of the 1,100. And the years are going to be four years. The value of the car at the end is going to be the 15,000. So we're going to have the car we imagine for four, four years. And then there's, of course, this problem with the residual value at the end of the time period. And this is going to be one of the things that's a little confusing when you think about the purchasing decision versus a leasing type of decision because the lease might be for a fixed amount of time. And when you make the purchase, you don't really know how long you might have the car. You might you got to make some type of estimate in terms of how long uh, the car is going to be lasting you, for example, when you're making a kind of comparison uh, between the two and to do that one way to do that is to say well at the end of the term I'm going to say that there's a residual value I'm going to think that I can sell the car at that point in time possibly having a cash inflow at that point of the 15,000 then we've got the discount rate which we're going to say is five percent so we're going to say the down payment is going to be the 7,800 obviously that's going to be a cash flow up front we have the loan payments that are going to be 1,100 if we think about them as just basically cash flows that's how much we're going to be paying and that'll include if it's a normal installment type of loan interest and uh, the principal the months that we're going to be paying over is 48 that's going to be the four years times 12. So we got 48 payments and that will give us then the 48 times the 1100, the 52,800 in terms of the loan payments in total. So the cash flow then is going to be the 52,800 plus the 7800. That's going to be the 60,600 in terms of the cash flow. And obviously that's the cash flow for this time frame of the four years that we have in place now after that point we're going to say the car's residual value is going to be the 15,000. if we were to sell it we can think about selling it at that point in time thinking that we could receive the 15,000. if we were to do that then of course it would be a cash flow or we might say that the value of the car that we might still be using uh, is the 15,000 that we would still be getting uh, use of. It's easiest to kind of think about these type of comparisons if we can break things down to basically cash flows or cash flow equivalents typically. So that's going to give us the net uh, cash flow or the net flow, which is going to be the 60,600 minus the 15,000 because that's going to be an inflow and that would give us the 45,600. So this is a calculation that's pretty straightforward because we're not really taking into consideration uh, time value of money considerations here. Also note that if the car was used for a job or something like that, then you might have to take into consideration the tax implications that could be involved. Let's compare that to like a lease situation. Let's say the down payment for the lease is 3,200. The monthly lease payments are 950 and the length of the lease is four years. So now we're comparing a four year lease here to the loan that would be extending uh, over the four years. If you've got different kind of terms in terms of how long the loan will be involved, it could be a little bit more complex, but the same kind of principles would apply here. We would, of course, try to break it down to cash flows over uh, the time frame that's being involved. And then once we break it down to cash flows, we can make some comparisons there. 
we might then uh, apply our present value kind of analysis, which we'll do next. So we'll say the cash flow here, we've got the cash flow is going to be the down payment for the lease of the 3200 up upfront. We've got the monthly lease payments then, which are going to be paying 950 per month. The number of months is 48. So if we take that 950 times 48, then we would get the 45600, 45600 here for the total monthly payments. And then uh, at the end of the lease, we've got charges. So at the end of this lease, of course, we don't have the residual value of the car because we don't get the car at that point in time. The car goes back, but we might have some more charges that we have to take into consideration. So in this case, we're going to say plus the 1,500 into the lease charges. That's going to give us then the, hold on a second. Let's do that again. We got the 3,200 plus the 45,600 plus the 1,500 that's going to give us the 50,300. So that's the initial comparison we could make. We got the 50,300 to the 45,600. We don't have any time value of money calculations, but the the time period that we're covering over this is fairly straightforward because we've kind of made it similar in that we've got the length of the lease similar to the loan and we basically cut out the end of the purchase at that endpoint by valuing the cash flow of the car kind of like it was a cash inflow as if we were to sell it uh, at that point because once again we want to break things down to the cash flows now if this was if you had different terms for example if you were planning on holding on to the car longer or the loan had a longer or shorter term than the lease gets a little bit more confusing but you could still break out this information and do this initial calculation with just simply the cash flows then on top of that, you might then say, well, now I want to add into a little bit more complexity and take into consideration the time value of money that could be applied. So let's use our present value type of factors for these larger types of purchases. So typically what you'll do here is you're going to say, let me let me take the term that this is being covered over. We're going to go from zero to four years. And then I'm going to use my present value calculations using a discount rate of the 5% to do that to, to take into consideration the time value of money because the flows that are happening in future periods are are going to be less in terms of present value terms than the flows that are happening in the current point in other words if i had a situation where i could basically um, purchase a car and pay the whole thing four years later instead of today i would be in a better situation than if i had to pay the whole thing up front today uh, and, and then nothing after that point in time, right? Because of the time value of money. I'd rather pay it later, typically, because of the time value of money. We're going to say that that time value of money is going to have the discount rate of the 5%. The next thing we want to do is break out our cash flows on a year-by-year -year basis. So I'm going to say, here's the years. Here's going to be the cash flows related to the purchasing decision. So in year zero, we had to put down up, up front that 7800 And then we had in year one the 13200 which is going to be the amount of payments that we made, which is the 1100 times 12. So there's the 13200 as we make the payments for the loan for uh, one, two, three, and four. And then also in year four, notice I've got the four here twice. We're saying at the end of that period, we sold the car and we're assuming that there's a value that we have to put some value on it at this point in time that's going to be cash a cash value at that point in time so if we sold it we can get the 15 that's going to help us to do the comparison because we got to break these down to basically cash flows right that's going to be the idea now if we present value each of these notice we can't really present value using an annuity we got to use the present value of one per period so anytime you got a more complex type of thing that's happening out into a longer frame into the future you can try to determine the cash flows on a year by year basis that might differ if they differ then you can't really use an annuity you could like try to do an annuity for like these few years or whatever but if you're using excel you might as well just do the present value but then we can present value them we of course have to determine what we believe is an appropriate discount rate in order to do the present value type of calculation which here we're going to determine is the five percent and you might think about that as kind of like the opportunity cost of the money what you could do with the money you know, if you had it and you can invest it elsewhere, for example. 
So we got then the present value is going to be the I won't get into the formula in too much depth here. We do do this in Excel. So if you want to work it in Excel, you could do it in Excel. But we're basically taking the present value of that 7,800 at period zero, which of course is the same value. We use the same present value calculation, but it's at period zero. This one, the 13,100, we're bringing back to uh, period zero, bringing it back one year. Present value calculation would be the rate, which is going to be the 5%. And then comma, the number of periods is going to be the one period. So we took the one period here. Notice that we're kind of doing a little bit of, of estimization or simplification because we didn't break it out to a month by month. You could basically try to break this on a longer, more extended point to a month by month breakout. But it's often good if you're talking about longer years to try to estimate these to a year by year cash flow and then and then uh, break it out on a year by year present value calculation, which is what we do here. So then we got the number of periods is going to be this uh, one over here and then two commas because we're not going to have the payment because it's not going to be an annuity type of calculation. And then the future value is going to be that 13,200 that we're pulling back to the current period. Also notice that this amount here is absolute referenced by the dollar signs. That's because it's being pulled from outside the data set. So when we pull this formula down, it's going to be the same as you can see between these two. This one, the number of periods is going to be uh, the number of periods is going to be from uh, here, which is this item. And notice this one did allow us to pull it down because we want it to be pulling and changing from year to year. And then this one as well is going to be the future value, which is this amount is changing from time as we copy the formula down, which is what we want, which is why it's not an absolute reference. Okay, spit it out. So this is going to be the second one. This 13,200 is now being pulled back two years. So same kind of calculation, but now of course it's less because of the time value of money. This one is going to be the 13,200 discounted at 5% back three years, giving us the 11,403. This 13,200 is discounted back at 5% for four years to give us the 10,860. You can see it's going down, of course. And then we have the cash inflow related to the car, assuming the, the value of the car at the end of the four years, which we could sell it for is a cash inflow of the 15,000. We discount that back for the four years as well, giving us the 12,341. And so now we're talking the 42,266. So of course, if I was just to look at the straight cash flows over this time frame, we've got the 46, 45, 600. But if I apply the discounting to it, we've got the 42,266, which might be a little bit more accurate to then compare it to the cash flows related to the lease information. So same kind of process. We're going to say here's the periods, uh, years one through four. And then we have the cash flows that were going to be the down payment up front. That's going to be the 3,200. And then we made 950 monthly lease payments. So again, I'm not breaking it out per month on the cash flow calculations. I'm going to annualize, even though when I look at this annualized number, that is going to be calculating as if it happened at the end of the period, which is a, a, a simplification because it really happened throughout the period. But, you know, some, all, this is all an estimate, right? So 950 times 12 is going to be the 11400. So we're going to annualize our cash flows. And that's going to happen for year one, year two, year three, year four. And then year five, we don't have the residual value of the car because it's not our car to sell at that point in time. We're going to be saying that the uh, end of the lease charges is going to be the 1500 And so we'll present value those items, discounting it back at the 5%. So the first one, of course, is at year zero. So we still use the present value, but it's at year zero. So there's no change. And then the second one is present value, 5%. There's the 5%. It's going to be absolute. That's why it's got the dollar signs. And then the number of periods is one. You can see that one changed from 13 to 14. It's not absolute because it's going to copy down. And then we had the skipping of the payments, that's what the two commas is because it's not an annuity and the future value is the 11,400, which you could see that one copied down from the three two with the 12 to the 13. So that's gonna be the same thing going down. We got the 11,400 discounted back at the 5% 
two years gives us the 10,340. We've got the 11,400 discounted back three years at the 5%, giving us the 9,484. We've got the 11,400 discounted four years back at the 5%, giving us the 9,379. And then we've got the 1,500. That's the last end of the lease charges of the 1,500 discounted back at the 5% to give us the 1,234. Uh, if we add those up, we have get to the 44,858. So now you can do the comparison on the total cash flows. The 45,600 is lower than the 50,300. And then we've got the 42,266 also lower than the 44,850, uh, 858. But you can see how you can kind of break this down into the total cash flows and then possibly take into consider, consideration the time value of money. And you can apply this kind of strategy even if it got more complex than this. For, for example, if the years were different or, or if, if you're taking into consideration the value, um, the, the, the other costs that might be related to the selling of the car at the end of this time frame, if you take into consideration maintenance and that kind of stuff under the two scenarios, if you take into consideration taxes, as long as you can try to quantify what you think the cash flows will be on a year by year basis, then you can use this kind of cash flow present value method, which looks complex, but quite is pretty easy to actually set up in Excel to do a fairly reasonable kind of side by side calculation. It's all an estimate because of course we are going to be estimating the discount rate, but it gives you a, a better idea than, than just kind of going, going with your gut on those long-term decisions. Going with the gut works for short-term habitual types of decisions oftentimes, but you kind of want to put a more formal thing in process with the uh, longer term decisions because we're not so good. We don't make those all the time and we don't have the, the, the luxury of the trial and error. And again, one way to do that is to do your best to break down the cash flows on a year by year basis, and then do your best to get your discount rate here and apply out a present value type of calculation and take a look at your uh, comparisons. Also just realize that with this kind of comparison too, you might take into consideration just the, the hassle which is hard to quantify in dollars, right? The hassle of going through the selling. Are you going to sell it after four years? That's kind of a hassle to go through the selling process. Is that easier or less easy than upping the lease or releasing the car, the ease on those types of things? Whenever you're getting into those intangible items, well, I like this because it's easier or I like this because I get, you know, this, the, the there's certain values to me that you have to quantify those values if you're going to use a quantifiable term like that that's what the dollars are here for they're trying to give us a quantifiable measure so if we're saying yeah but i just like this better because it's easier for me to do then i've got to quantify you know i got to quantify that in some way if i'm going to do an accurate comparison from 